Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris Nenet, of course, and I are going to take a look together at this topic, trading commodities and stock indices is our focus. So before we kick off this webinar, though, be aware of these two disclaimers. First, this webinar is shown to a global audience. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity for more details on that. Plus, please be aware that trading for sharing to global financial markets is considered higher risk. Therefore, please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, Nenet and I, thank you so much for your attention on that. So, uh, basically, commodities and stock indices, well, Nenet and I talk, of course, a lot more about Forex markets than currency pairs. Uh, so today we wanted to mix it up a bit and talk about other financial instruments and uh, dive into into those details. Now we ourselves are trading the forex market uh, the most intensively. I do analyze myself uh, regularly: gold, silver, oil, S and P 500, uh, DAX, and I have traded them in the past. But my preference personally for uh, trading uh, lies with Forex, but you know that everyone has their own uh, preferences. Uh, there are a lot of S&P, sorry, DAX traders that, um, and probably S&P 500 too, but DAX traders especially, there's a lot of movement there, a lot of price action, uh, and, and those particular swings can really push far. So there's no reason, you know, from an intraday perspective, there's a lot of price action there as well. So, you know, it's up to the trader really to find their niche and their preference and focus on what they feel comfortable with. That's everyone's choice really from my point of view. Uh, so, you know, that that's the first thing. Now, just in general regarding, uh, let's kick off with commodities here as you can see. Uh, so commodities of course, well you have various types of commodities of course. Uh, you have commodities that uh, are, are in the ground like oil, uh, gold, and, and silver, something that you need to find and, and discover and uh, and reach. We also have other commodities, of course. You have agriculture commodities uh, like coffee and, uh, or beans, maybe I should say, <laughs> better said, coffee is the, is the end of the result, but, uh, you know, corn and, and wheat, etc. right? So, of course, there are different reasons why one would be interested in that. I mean, if you're a agriculture grower and you want to protect the price that is currently available, you might take a future contract on a particular commodity price, uh, so you reduce the risk. All right. Of course, there's also speculation involved, uh, even in commodities. Uh, there's also true demand for particular products. So there's a mixture of that going on in even in, in commodities. Um, like copper and platinum, uh, so there's a ton of commodities available. But from this perspective, uh, I want to focus specifically more on, on gold and oil um, because those are the ones that I've analyzed. I think those are the most traded ones, uh, just generally speaking. All right. Now, the gold and oil and silver do depend, as I just already indicated, on what, you know, the supply basically is really literally what people find, not only find, but is it economic viable to, to, to basically mine? Is it viable to, to dig it, to explore, explore it, not explore, but to commercialize it, right? Because some fields, some oil fields are tucked away in difficult spots. And the cost of reaching those fields uh, might be quite expensive. They could actually be more expensive than uh, the current market oil price uh, really uh, allows. So as the oil price goes up, more oil feeds do become more attractive because uh, there's just more expected gain from uh, from oil from the oil price, right? So um, more difficult spots are typically in the ocean. Um, and depending on the structure of the of the ground as well, I'm not an expert in that. That's part geology, but 
Um, some places are just easier to, to dig and to drill and to find oil than other spots. So the cost of oil does vary greatly uh, depending on that location. Uh, first of all, before we continue, uh, Caesar is having connection problems. Uh, I hope no one else is having those problems, by the way. Can, can you write a why if everything is fine from your side? And Caesar, yes, the webinar will be uploaded to YouTube ID. We're recording it right now, so that should be available tomorrow. All right, so uh, that's one side of the thing. Now, regarding oil and gold specifically, uh, one thing to consider is what are the alternatives? Oil is used for uh, energy, for instance, so uh, there could be competition to oil in, for instance, uh, solar or wind energy or nuclear energy, right? So more energy that is being supplied through these channels uh, have are a direct competition to oil. And there could be less demand for oil and the price would go down. Uh, this is something, the oil price itself is also something that you want to be uh, realized that there are global players involved. OPEC uh, for instance, is a, a group of oil countries, uh, including some of the countries in the Middle East, big oil producers, that want to basically regulate uh, the supply a bit to affect the price. If price is going too high or too low, they will reduce production or increase production to keep the price in a certain kind of region. All right, that, that depends from time to time what is what they think is, is a good price, let's say maybe a fair price from their point of view. But so these are things you want to be aware of, uh, that you know these meetings do have effect, these, these countries do have an influence on, uh, on demand and price. So supply and price, sorry. So um, now I lost my train of thought, but okay, I'll continue. Also, uh, gold, for instance, is an alternative investment. So in times of uh, financial uh, or, or political problems, for instance, uh, tra traders and investors typically see gold as a safe haven. Gold does not generate any return, as you probably know. Uh, it's not, no one is going to give you uh, any interest rate, any extra uh, basically profits from gold. Of course, the price of gold, gold could go up uh, and that's the profit you might make if you then sell it. You might also lose money if it goes down, but otherwise there's no dividend, for instance, or uh, interest that is given to it. All right, so that is basically a bit of a disadvantage. Um, so if there is political instability, then it is seen as a safe haven currencies, are not backed nowadays anymore by gold. That standard was dropped in the 70s. Now currencies are fiat and they're backed by the government. So if the debt reaches a certain level or if there's political turmoil, uh, those those pieces of paper in a way, right, uh, in some cases are, are might lose their value or uh, are not as meaningful as uh, perhaps gold could be. In some cases, right? So that that happens with gold. It's the same in times of uh, instability that the dollar traditionally has as a safe haven, or the Swiss franc, or in the past, I'm not sure about now, but uh, the Japanese yen. The yen has been weakening, but before that, uh, five years ago, it was very strong, and that had the same kind of role. So uh, supply and demand are yeah, they're basically things that, you know, want to keep a very close eye on them. With currencies, it's a bit different because there's always this battle between two currencies. There's always this battle between how the economies are doing of Europe uh, or the Eurozone, to be precise, and individual Euro, Euro, uh, European currencies and, and the dollar and, and the yen and the Australian dollar. And so there's a clear kind of country behind that particular currency uh, with oil and gold 
this dynamic is is not as clear you have gold is being offered against the dollar against the euro against the Australian dollar but gold and, uh, and oil they have there are a lot of influences available uh, sorry impacting it uh, so that's something you want to be aware of all right but furthermore not only these factors I just mentioned but also just generally speaking the global economy uh, inflations and rate hikes and risk and insecurity I should just explain the risk and insecurity part uh, are also in impacting it right because if the interest rates are high then typically uh, you're going to see the currencies being more interesting the bonds are uh, more have more value right because I mean I mean they have a higher interest rate they, they provide more um, return on uh, on your own ownership of the dollar of the Australian dollar at this moment of course interest rates are very low but if those interest rates would be high there is more uh, benefit to those and inflation of course so if there's a runaway inflation if the inflation is high then that's not good for the currency because then the currency is is losing its value very quickly all right so there's a kind of ideal inflation rate where uh, the interest rate is high to combat that inflation but it's not too high so that you know the, the, the value of that currency is not losing too much ground too quickly so central banks often therefore target the two percent rate right that's a it's a it's a rate that is not scaring people <laughs> from day to day but it is showing kind of a healthy slanted upward uh, growth pace and that that's what those central banks want all right so here you see in uh, the screenshot you see WTI that's oil and uh, you see that oil was reaching there was a, a big boom in oil and it was a run up to 160 then the big fall all the way bound down to 40 recovery and then again a fall even below 40 so what I think t is typical for commodities is is these booms and busts um, you know this I think that the currencies tend to show a bit more trending style environments. Um, you'll see price move away from the moving average and pull back to it and move away, pull back and eventually go back to the long term mean. I, from my perspective at least, commodities tend to have sometimes massive rallies but then there could be a massive collapse and it could just go pretty much sideways after that or or pretty pretty long corrections uh, we'll take a look we can take a look at oil or gold right now gold for instance um, there was a massive correction for years if not a decade right before it made its run up uh, oil never broke above 40 uh, until about 10 years ago I think or 12 years ago all right, so it was a massive correction since the end of the 80s when, when it hit 40. We'll take a look at the charts right now. It's better. One second. This is gold. There we go. So here in the 90s, gold didn't go anywhere, stuck in this range until 2005 really. That's when the big breakout occurred up to 2011, six years of a massive bull run. And before that, it was really uh, not much. There was some slight upside, I believe, here. We don't see that, unfortunately. There was a bit of upside in the before 93 here. And I'm not sure what the high point was. I think 700-ish or something like that. Uh, but uh, there was a spike up somewhere there before 93. And after that, there was a big correction. Now, I'm not sure when. It was somewhere in the end of the, either end of 80s or end of 70s. Uh, one of those two, end of the decade. In any case, big correction after that. So that's what I think is typical for, for commodities somehow. There, there's, a, a, there's this, at one point, there's this, big expansion big run 
but uh, yeah, it, it, it's not as, as trending. And then there's a massive correction, and it could last for quite a long time. Just like this gold lasted, this correction lasted perhaps uh, maybe, well, definitely 15 years, if not longer. No, I should say, yes, 15 years, if not longer, probably 25 years. But in any case, let's move on. Stock indices. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about stock indices, and then Nenet is going to share his view on uh, both as well, by the way. All right, so, so okay, first of all, stocks. With Admiral Markets, uh, you can um, basically trade several stocks. Quite a decent amount of stocks are available there, uh, Facebook, tech firms, and some of these stocks have, have large volume. So something to look into if you find that interesting. Stock indices are sometimes very fast moving like the DAX, good intraday potential, all right? So that's something like S&P 500, DAX, those move are big movers. So we'll take a look at those charts in a second. Uh, regarding uh, intermarket correlations, all right, I think that that's important to keep an eye on when we're looking at stock indices, stocks, commodities, and currencies in general, right? Because Ultimately, all of these markets, although I'm talking, we're talking about them as a separate entity at this moment, uh, there's, there's this connection between all these markets now more than ever, now that the world is ever more so globalized, uh, we're seeing um, that this is more and more relevant, right? And I mean, that's of course an easy statement, I guess in a way it's a common statement to make, it's more and more globalized, but if you really look at statistics, uh, re regarding the, the the GDP that is dependent on exports and imports, uh, those numbers have significantly risen, uh, as far as I've seen in studies, at least in uh, the last 30 years. <clears throat> All right, so we've definitely um, there are numbers to show, indeed, and indicate that this trend is indeed appearing and visible. So the markets are not, you know, not that they were necessary in the past, but now even more so are impacting each other. So whenever we trade anything, it's always good to look at the, generally speaking, not a bad idea to look at the broader picture, the wider picture, and see what's going on in other markets. Does it make sense that I'm looking for or I'm expecting a dollar strength? You know, in relationship to other markets, does that fit within that picture? Not a bad question to to ask. And that goes, and that ties into all kind of things: the monetary policies of the U.S., the eurozone, Japan, China, major players, the uh, uh, other countries, Russia, Brazil, emerging countries, right? We want to keep that all in mind. Uh, monetary policy, of course, interest rates, quantitative easing nowadays, those are all policy tools of central banks to impact monetary policy. And the monetary policy has, of course, been very prominently um, in the picture the last 10 years. And central banks have a, a very strong role in fighting or basically Proving the situation, economic situation after uh, the Great Recession in 2008. Fiscal policy, of course, you know, what is the, the debt ratio versus GDP? What is the yearly deficits? Uh, and what kind of expenditures are there being done? Is there expansion of expenditures and contraction of expenditures? The government spending is a large part of that. And so when they, send, when they say I'm spending, uh, that's something to note. So that, that's another part of the policies you want to keep an eye on for each country. Uh, economic performances and tax policies, global risk of flight. So there's a lot of things to think about. I know, generally speaking, uh, this is impacting, of course, the world, impacting the, the current affairs, these things. And uh, it will be eventually visible in price. So I always keep an eye on price action uh, and keep an eye on how price is responding. That's the ultimate, my ultimate judgment 
But I just want to explain that when you look at commodities, when you look at stock indices, that from a long-term perspective, from a medium-term medium -term perspective as well, it doesn't hurt to, to, to look at the fundamentals and the longer, uh, you know, longer fundamental picture as well. Now, if you're trading from day to day, from hour to hour, uh, these things stay quite stable and don't change uh, quickly. And in those cases, it's just good to keep an eye on the, the news events, of course, and make sure that uh, you're well aware of those. But my main message is just don't see these entities as totally standalone. That's my main thing, basically. Just make sure that, just keep an eye on the fact that these are, are connected and inter interconnected and, and related to each other. That, that's my main message. Um, just to give an example, maybe, for instance, you know, on the USD, for instance, the, the Fed, Central Bank of the US, so they're expecting to raise rates soon and the quantitative easing is expected, this is, is ended, right, that there was quantitative easing in the past, European zone is still showing quantitative easing, so what could that do with the exchange rate, right, the dollar should strengthen, euros should weaken, but how would that impact the stock market, right? And that's the big question too, because dollar strengthening could hurt some of the companies in the U.S. Interest rates up um, could hurt some of the stock prices too, potentially, uh, as uh, quantitative easing was actually supporting the stock market expansion, all right? So what will happen to that stock market? So those are things to keep an eye on. And this is something we'll talk about in tonight in a webinar on January 5th, forecast for 2017. So I hope to see you there uh, in that webinar. Regarding some of the technicals, regarding commodities, we still have some time remaining. I myself, regarding, let's start with gold. Uh, I myself am Slightly bullish at this moment. I don't think it's going to be uh, a massive rally uh, to the upside, but I do think that there is a potential for a rally. We we see that price corrected this uptrend all the way down to the 50 fib, and there was a bounce at the 50 fib. So from my perspective, after that bounce of the 50 fib, I see uh, five waves up. So f that's why I'm thinking at this moment that this is either wave A or one. I'm not sure which one it is. At this point, it really doesn't matter. I think that, uh, therefore, that this is a retracement and a wave two or B, and we can see a rally up for wave three or C. Now, whether it's three or C, I don't know. That will depend on how far it pushes. If it just goes up to this target, sorry, I just deleted my own gold chart unfortunately because I wanted to open a drawing tool or use the drawing tool and clicked on the wrong button there so I let me quickly open it hang on folks uh, let me, let's see all right when you're in a rush metals of course there we go All right, so we're back and running here. All right, so yeah, I was saying that I'm using this fib. I'm looking for price basically to go to these targets and complete this ABC zigzag. And if it pushes above the minus 61.8 fib, then I would start to change my opinion. In that case, there might be a bigger upside. For the moment, though, anything that below, that stays below the minus 61.8 and these bottoms here, I think could just simply be a correction and price might stay in this range, for instance, make a three move, move down again and just go sideways like that. Of course, this is very long term, so really not very important to discuss uh, this part as yet. Uh, for the moment, this potential part is more important. So basically, this bottom is my invalidation level. I mean, if it pushes through this bottom, then that ABC zigzag is not not uh, appearing and not occurring. Very simple. In that case, there could be a continuation 
uh, of this downside momentum that this upside was a correction and price could follow through uh, to 2000 to uh, 920 here etc now considering last month's bearish candle I did not expect the 61.8 fib to be a stopping spot because of the strong momentum in this candle typically support or resistance does not hold if such a candle such a strong candle is visible so the break of the 61.8 fib was made a lot of sense that was too strong of a candle to stop so immediately i started to look at the 78.6 fib perhaps the 88.6 fib as deep retracements within that abc zigzag the invalidation level once again is this bottom and i'm expecting a abc rally up to the 272 target all right perhaps higher main target if it now that price is probably going to the 78.6 fib the main target is actually the minus 270 target but it could extend up to the minus 61.8 so there's nothing really earth shocking by the way i mean price has been up here before uh, and it's just a simple retracement back within the this zone i don't think it's really a very um significant move but it could be um pretty large move though still $350 here versus about an 80 75 risk so let's see if that happens or not but that's my current expectations and here you see the daily chart and I think it's going to bounce there so that's that's cool but the validation level is clear oil let's take a look at that Sorry, I got to move all the way across here. Let's see. There we go. Oil monthly chart. So oil um, had a huge run up, and you see only part of that uh, actually. That was about ten years ago. Oil went up all the way to not 160, but almost 150. Big bull market there, and uh, here too, oil really making. Most of its gains, I mean, we don't see enough, but really there was a large period of time where oil reached once $40 in the last century. But after that, it, it never really reached those levels. It just stayed around 20, 30-ish for decades, really. Until that big boom up. And uh, as I said, these booms and busts, kind of typical for commodities, at least from my perspective. Uh, so we saw price then going back here, making a rebound, and then going into a triangle. So when I saw this triangle, I was bearish, personally, momentum, correction, momentum. So eventually that happened. Price broke the support trend line and posted the lower low. Now, at this moment, price is making, again, a bounce up, as you can see. Let me get rid of this. Pivot point. All right, there we go. All righty. So uh, it looks like there could be a correction, an ABC zigzag correction, price making this movement, and it looks like it's trying to break above that top. So from this perspective, I think good chance that price might finish and complete up to the minus 272, or perhaps the minus 61.8. For the moment, the minus 272 target around 59, the long term moving average. The top in here, that could be uh, a turning spot. And I'll have to see. Uh, at this moment, talked about the potential of an inverse head and shoulders already before. Right? That neckline was broken. Now, it this kind of threw me off a bit because, well, not threw me off, but I was careful of that move because a break below the support could have indicated a continuation of the downtrend, but that never happened. And also, the momentum was pretty strong. But ultimately, bullish candles uh, pushing higher. And I think that this is now looking like an ascending wedge. And I think this target is in sight. Well, what happened at that target, though? And that is something we have to see. If it respects that target, this could still be a correction, uh, a, a bit larger correction. But ultimately, this momentum is quite strong. Now, once again, oil is dependent on a lot of factors, not only technicals, uh, but on supply and demand factors. So we we'll have to see price could go sideways like this but if price signals any particular hesitation there 
then could there still be a retracement within this big downtrend like this? And could there be a retest of the bottom? I think so. I think that that's definitely possible. So I would personally not be surprised to see something like this occur uh, on oil. All right, that's for the moment with my uh, two cents. How far it's, it will it test the bottom and if will it break the bottom for a new low? I think it's too soon to talk about that. It really depends on how much momentum happens if it turns at these targets, first of all. So let's not waste too much time on that. Um, so that's some of my view here, technical view on oil and, and gold at least, uh, two commodities. Regarding quickly, last thing regarding some indices, by the way, let's take a look at S&P index from my perspective. All right, S&P 500, very strong weekly candle. So clearing all these, breaking all these tops here, that weekly candle I think should see follow through. What I'm keeping an eye on, on the weekly chart, I think that this should continue with higher highs. But if five to six weeks do not break, do not continue with higher highs, that's the moment that I think uh, uh, this upside push is, is probably over. So for the moment, bullish momentum, basically. Uh, and that's the same is valid for DAX. And then I'm going to pass it over to, to Nanette. Let me just quickly find the DAX. It used to be there. I think that I deleted that one too by accident. There it is. DAX also finally breaking above this consolidation on the daily chart. And you see momentum kick in. All right. So there we have it. Also strong with key candle. And finally, the break pullback and continuation is, is occurring as expected. So that's what was my two cents already, 50 fib bounce. And uh, this bullish candle is strong. I don't expect the 2727 target to hold it. And I think there's a continuation to the minus 61.8 target possible. And uh, if there is a bull flag, then a break above that could see a further extension to the minus on the target. So step by step, though, for the moment, I think that this space is, is available to that target, to minus 61.8 target. All right, so that's my point of view for the moment. I'm going to hand it over now to, to Nenet. Excellent uh, presentation. Yeah, I will continue with uh, trading basics. So, uh, first of all, guys, uh, for all of you who are new in uh, forex trading, uh, maybe you come from your back, maybe your background comes from other markets such as commodities or equities. I need to say that uh, equities and and both commodities and forex market are definitely linked together. Uh, the primary thing is that uh, dollar is a safe haven. We also have yen as a reserve currency. Uh, also, we have gold as metal that offers safe haven status, and because of that, you need to know that Swiss and gold are very correlated because Swiss is backed, Swiss franc is backed by gold reserves. Now, primary thing that uh, new traders ask me when they start a trade: Can we trade gold? Can we trade currencies together? And I always say yes, but you need to watch correlation table. Now, for all of you who are new, I won't be uh, showing correlation again because we already know about correlation table. You can download it with our Admiral Market Supreme Edition, and you will have a perfect correlation table. Uh, but I want to say and state out that. Uh, uh, that uh, Swissy, if you trade and if you're Swissy traders, uh, you need to know that it's heavily backed up by gold. So uh, let's say that uh, Swiss franc is also uh, considered as a sort of safe haven currency, of course not as dollar, but uh, the thing is that uh, when gold price appreciates, for example, a Swissy will usually rise. And sometimes if you notice that and if you are following uh, geopolitical events, if you see that there is a geopolitical crisis, Swissy will usually rise because investors tend to look for safer grounds. So definitely Swiss is backed by gold and uh, also uh, Swissy is backed by Swiss bonds. 
CAD and oil are also connected. Chris uh, has already talked uh, about it, so I won't be mentioning, but you know that when, for example, dollar CAD, uh, if it goes down, it means that oil is going up and vice versa. Also, what is very important is to notice the, the, the correlation between Australian dollar and gold. And the thing is that, uh, well, uh, it's an old correlation, guys. First of all, we need to say that uh, Australian dollar is hard commodity currency. And uh, gold uh, and Australian dollar relationship comes from production. You need to know that Australia is maybe the largest gold producer in the world and it's definitely one of the largest gold producers and uh, as a result uh, Australian dollar and gold are positively correlated. Uh, the thing is that uh, if you trade intraday and you want to capitalize on forex and commodity movements you should watch definitely Australian dollar and gold uh, and uh, if you do that, uh, your chance to have a profitable trade will definitely spike. The thing is that uh, Australian dollar is also connected to iron ore and copper. Now, the thing is with iron ore, uh, you see the chart here, uh, correlation was mostly positive. Now, that there is some sort of divergence that we see, but definitely Australian dollar, it goes down whenever iron ore drops. Uh, the thing is that uh, mostly traders prefer to trade gold as their fa favorite metal. Uh, gold is more traded than silver or palladium. Uh, and uh, if you come from, uh, as I said in the beginning, if you come from a commodity, from metal trading background, you definitely need to watch and consider Australian dollar as your currency of choice. Okay. If you traded oil, for example, as, you, as uh, if you were an oil trader, uh, then you should follow CAD. Also, guys, if you want to follow gold more closely, follow it with also with Swissy, okay? because it's backed up, as I said, with gold reserves. Now, uh, technically, all traders want to find their cues in technical formations with corresponding correlation. Uh, if you open your gold chart, you will see uh, a movement. Now you can also open your Australian dollar chart and you will see positively correlated movement. I mean, we already talked about it. Uh, I won't be, uh, dig uh, I won't be dig uh, digging uh, so deeply because this is the subject of this webinar is the basic correlation. So I will be mostly focused on DAX today and this should be mentioned for all traders who are actually new because these are guys definitely the basics of trading. Uh, you can see here a gold uh, and Australian dollar correlation between 2000 to 2011. You can see a nice path and you can see basically how uh, gold is following Australian dollar and vice versa. Also here there is a gold versus Swiss franc uh, also following the same path of a positive correlation. CAD dollar exchange rate, this is of course CAD dollar uh, uh, inverse uh, forex quotation. We usually use dollar CAD, but here we can see actually uh, CAD uh, and uh, dollar. Uh, and CAD is uh, directly connected to oil price. When oil goes up, CAD also spikes. That will lead CAD dollar to the upside and dollar CAD to the downside and vice versa. So this is what you can actually watch. Now, guys, uh, also, uh, I know that many traders prefer to trade both equities and forex market. And the thing is that stocks and equity markets are very closely uh, co covered in news, TV, and uh, media. Uh, I prefer to call indices as stocks because uh, basically those are a group of stocks grouped together and I prefer to call it equity uh, market. Yeah, I had a question. Uh, yeah, uh, I will just answer the question and I will uh, proceed with webinar. Uh, uh, is, uh, uh, the question was, is Australia uh, iron ore export uh, connected to the GDP? 
Uh, yes, I can see that Australia, uh, being the world's largest iron ore exporter, uh, well, uh, could see, for example, that is the last uh, information that I see, it could see as much as 2.2% share of its GDP growth as a first order consequence. That was the latest information. Uh, but the thing is that uh, those who want to seek to evaluate exposures in Australian dollar uh, currency uh, also can look to the price of iron ore as a potential driver of returns. So that is how I see it. So uh, if you trade in equities, uh, you definitely invest in companies that make everyday products. But equities are much, much, uh, I can say, uh, volatile than forex currencies. Uh, the thing is that uh, mostly yen currencies are uh, heavily, heavily correlated with uh, uh, equities. Uh, the thing is, usually, uh, well, uh, uh, when when we when we see that Japanese yen is going up, we always follow respected equities. So, uh, if you are London trader, watch for DAX. If you are US trader, watch for, uh, let's say, S&P 500. If you are trading during the Asian session, then watch for Nikkei and watch for yen correlation. Yen is my, I need to say, definitely uh, at least a couple of months ago, maybe for four or five months, uh, uh, yen has been the, the favorite pair that I trade. I prefer it even better than dollar, uh, simply because we have a huge movement in, in yen. Now, if you follow my analysis, I mean, you can read it every day. Uh, I often do also the New Zealand dollar, Euro dollar analysis, but I mix it up with yen, because yen definitely, definitely is uh, moving well in, in much higher range than its counterpart uh, dollar. For example, guys, uh, Australian dollar yen shorting is better than New Zealand yen shorting because soft commodities are doing better than hard commodities. Okay, Australian dollar yen is heavily connected to equities markets, heavily. And always watch correlation if you're Asian trader with Nikkei and China stock market also. When China stock market is plummeting, investors fear that it will slow global economic activity and that causes equities to go down. For that, you need to watch Chinese A50 cash index. Okay, you need to remember, China stock market was opened up for margin lending earlier this year and the market exploded north. When the selling started at the top, we, we had a huge margin calls all the way down, okay? Have in mind that history repeats in Forex market. And by looking at this history, you can always watch uh, and you can always determine good levels to buy and sell. Now, when outlook for a certain stock market is good, it means that in international money flows in. When outlook for a certain stock market is bad, international money flows out. And that is why generally, the general rule is when, 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 when we see a strong stock market, we will also see a strong currency and vice versa. So that is a general rule. Now these are some of the equities, of course, guys, that you can watch for. Uh, here on other markets platform, uh, we have a lot more. So I will mention Dow, Nasdaq, Nikkei, DAX, FTSE, uh, also uh, DJ Euro Stocks 50, that is a blue chip index. Uh, also guys, uh, uh, the counterpart to FTSE is actually DAX, and that is why traders prefer to trade DAX. Uh, usually DAX is the favorite uh, choice of, uh, of uh, traders, uh, of, of uh, those traders who trade both Forex and, and equities. Now, uh, a trader also asked me, some traders asked me in the past, is there any connection between oil and inflation? I personally think that oil is included in the basket of goods that calculates inflation. But also, guys, oil is a major cost of production from transport, airlines, or even in farming and many other uses like heating. So when the cost of production decrease, it can lead to decreases in the price of various products too. Okay. So that is uh, that is important to know uh, for for oil. So yeah, I, I answered that that question. 
Uh, also, guys, uh, when we talk about equities, you definitely want to watch for price versus earning ratio. Now, uh, that is how I track earnings in the DAX every quarter. Because it's a small index, only 30 companies, it's very easy to track it. But also it builds valuation models on companies. Okay, uh, here on this uh, website, uh, you can see the market, uh, I will show you now, you will see the market capitalization of each DAX company. Uh, so I, I don't know how many of you guys actually uh, watch for this, but this is crucial information if you want, if you want to follow DAX guys. Uh, of course guys, uh, DAX is, uh, of course, uh, German index. So here, this is it, this is how it looks like, and uh, definitely, uh, wait, wait, let me show you. So this is it. I will, uh, I will give you the link here so you can actually, uh, here, this is the link. So you can watch market capitalization each day here. Okay, so this is the link. Uh, and uh, it's like www.finanzen.net and here the rest uh, uh, follows. So this is what you should definitely watch as a tra as DAX uh, trader. Uh, price earnings ratio is let let me try to explain this is in simple English. Uh, price earnings ratio is like saying how many years of earnings does it take to pay back the price. So a company with a price earnings ratio of let's say 14 is like saying it takes 14 years of earnings to repay the price. Remember, earnings is the amount uh, a company earns for the year. Okay, guys. So this is this is this is very very important for you to know. Very very important. Uh, the thing is, uh, I don't know how many of you, as I say, follow DAX, but I will give you now a quick DAX. Uh, I mean technical strategy that you can that you can uh, apply uh, to your own uh, strategy. So how I usually do it? Uh, well, uh, this is what I learned also from my mate who trades a DAX. He is a professional DAX trader, and he uh, explained uh, this sort of strategy to me uh, when I asked him. Uh, does he use any moving average in, in, in his strategy? And uh, definitely, uh, this is how he uh, does it. Uh, first of all, guys, uh, yeah, I will, I will show you this before I delve deeper, uh, de uh, before I delve deeper into it. Uh, as I said, DAX is Germany's main index. Now, follow me carefully. In bull market, in bull market, Monday, Thursday, and Friday are days when DAX usually spikes, okay? That is, I mean, that is usually. I'm talking about generally speaking. In bull market, Tuesday and Wednesdays are actually days when it drops, okay? So this is what you should follow. In bear market, it drops on Monday, Thursday, and Friday, and on in bear market it spikes on Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay, so this should be clear to you. So we need to distinguish whether we have a bull market or bear market. In bull market, Monday, Thursday, Friday, DAX usually spikes. Tuesday, Wednesday drops, and in bear market. It will usually drop on Monday, Thursday, Friday, and spike on Tuesday and Wednesday. That is why we traders call a turnaround Tuesday. That is how we call Tuesday. Now, if you want to determine what is the general outlook for a daily, for a daily trading on DAX, we need to place EMA 80, and we need to watch for the opening of the day. Above 80 is the, the DAX is bullish below the DAX is bearish. And this is how it looks. So if you open one hour time frame, you can press control 
and Y. Okay, like this, Control and Y, and on your keyboard, and you will see these quadrants. Every quadrant is the day, full day of price action. So we can see here that DAX has been bullish since the 2nd of December, and it is above EMA 80. So today is Tuesday, right? And on Tuesday, we saw a correction here, you see, it, it dropped, and then it spiked. Okay, so usually Tuesdays are meant for corrections, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, DAX actually breaks this daily high today because the market is bullish. So uh, now if you want to go further into this, uh, you can apply, guys, your own strategy for trading. So my suggestion is follow what it does on, on, uh, on those particular days, and then if you want to trade it, drop down to lower time frame, let's say 5 minutes or 15 minutes, and watch for, let's say, long entries on dips. Okay, watch for long entries on dips. Uh, that is a general strategy that I, uh, that I, well, that I heard from my friend. And uh, the thing is that uh, it might work. I mean, I personally haven't tested it, but that is what he told me so you might opt to try it. What I, need, what I know is definitely that Tuesdays are days when we have some corrections. For example, pound yen, you can watch pound yen today. Pound yen is indeed heavily correlated to DAX and equities. So this is how pound yen, I will show you now how it looked like today. So we saw a correction in pound yen. Uh, the correction was high. It was like 80 pips of a drop. So that is, I mean, a similar pattern is also seen on DAX index. So you see that Tuesdays are uh, also days when price turns. Uh, now what I also wanted to tell you is for all of you who trade intermarket correlations, like, like uh, trading in the same time equities and forex, Definitely watch for China, guys. Okay, definitely watch for China. Uh, for me, uh, Chinese A50 index is one of the most important uh, goals for uh, for uh, China, for uh, their economy. But also, guys, uh, don't forget uh, that uh, actually uh, on our platform it's. Hang Seng Index. Hang Seng Index is, this is the abbreviation, HSI50, and that is a free flow adjusted capit market capitalization stock market index in Hong Kong. Uh, it uses, usually it monitors largest companies of the Hong Kong, and I, I will show you now, uh, it's, the movement is huge, it's abnormal, guys. So if you are brave enough to try to trade something that will definitely spike your uh, nerves and emotions, well, this is the index which you definitely need to follow. Uh, it's huge volatility, definitely definitely we can uh, contribute to HSBC because uh, Hang Seng, despite being a public company, the majority is held in majority by, of course, HSBC. Uh, the thing is that if you apply correct, you can scalp, you can make intraday, intranight trades, it, it moves during Asian session heavily, uh, but definitely watch for news. Uh, when you see news on China, rest assured that this index will also move a lot. For trading Hang Seng, I recommend price action. And what you would like to see is actually those trend line breaks. Because volatility on this index is huge uh, and the range is high, usually is supported also when it's above 80 and when it drops below 80 it means it's bearish 
as I say, uh, volatility and ATR of this equity index is huge, and you can actually just apply trend line breaks and uh, and uh, bounces off EMA 80 for a general uh, movement. You see how it's it's it follows EMA. I mean, it's really a good EMA follower. But also, guys, notice big gaps. Okay. Uh, those gaps are very, very uh, common in stock and equity market, and what I uh, can say is that usually those gaps are uh, are filled, and most of those gaps will be common gaps, not breakaway gaps, but rather common gaps that traders prefer to trade. So when you see a gap, usually those gaps will be closed and filled. So. Uh, as I said, this is basic of uh, correlations between commodities, stocks, and forex. Uh, if you have any question, guys, you can ask me now. Uh, if anything is not clear, feel free to email me. We will answer you. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, and it will be uploaded tomorrow. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed. I try to be as, as concise as I could be. And one last thing, guys. Uh, this is uh, the breakdown of sector targeted focus areas and existing capability in China's economy. Now, if you can take a snapshot here, it was taken from uh, Credit Suisse Bank, from their research, and you can see that, uh, I mean, you can read it easily. Uh, let's say information technology, existing capability says that it's limited, but key focus sector for creating leadership in technology, guys. Okay, also it's a leader in low and medium levels NC tools. It is numerical control tools and robotics. So you can actually see that uh, Chinese, China is a global leader in economy and every time uh, Chinese uh, economy is stalling, markets will drop, especially indices. So watch for that correlation. Uh, try to connect this to also other markets, okay? Uh, Let's say uh, for or, uh, aerospace equipment, you should also watch gold and iron ore. Okay, so try to connect the logic between uh, these, uh, between the currencies and equities. Okay, uh, and uh, if anything, guys, is not clear, do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, my uh, suggestion is, if you want to switch, I mean, you don't need necessarily to switch, but if you want to try to trade equities, then first start with DAX and then later moves to Hang Seng Index because Hang Seng Index is much more dangerous and much more volatile than DAX. You can easily see 800,000 pip movements during the night. It's huge. So that was all from me today. I don't see any questions, so I hope that you will find this information useful. Thank you guys for comments. Uh, we will be we will be here with you soon next uh, Monday. We wish you great trading and expect new analysis tomorrow. Cheers, guys, and trade safe.